Well, Alan, it's nice to have a chance to see you in New York because the last time we talked, you were in Dallas at SMU. I remember that very well, talking about all the president's men. Yes, and now we're, we're going to talk about starting over. This um, picture, I think, is a whole new look at Candace Bergen. Yes, she's remarkable, I think. Who thought of, uh, because I don't think most people would ever think of Candace for this role. Who thought of her? Well, uh, God, I'm trying to remember how that happened. I do remember when I first talked to Candace, Candace said, I don't even know that I would know how to do that or that I'd be right for that. So, uh, well, that's rather all right for me. So I said, why don't we just sit down and read it together? So she uh, and Bert and I got together and they just sat down and I said, see how you feel about it. And, and from the moment she started to read, she had wonderful comic instincts, which I had never seen before in that way on screen. And Bert and I looked at each other that she really has something very original to give this role. And uh, indeed she has. And after that, the major thing really was just really making sure Candy knew you believed in her and, and keeping a relaxed environment. Because uh, as Candy always said to me, I've always been afraid of making an ass of myself as an actress. And God knows she didn't take that fear with her in this one because she took, had her choices are outrageous and daring and and wonderful, and original, I thought original, uh, and it's, uh, I was surprised because it's unusual to see a beautiful woman being funny, and naturally so, and uh, it was a wonderful experience, it was a wonderful experience working with all three of them, I must say, in that way. As far as Bert is concerned, now he apparently was in competition for the role. Well, he, I think he thought he was in more competition than, uh, than uh, he had, I mean, in my own mind, I didn't know anybody else I thought was right for the role. I felt that uh, most of the actors today, most of the stars today, are more complicated and uh, you know, it's post brandel generation in which a lot of the stars bring in, you know, interesting, fascinating, neurotic quality. Well, this is not about a neurotic man who destroys his own marriage. It's about a very, it's about a decent American male who would have been totally happy with his first wife and lived happily ever after 30 years ago in a Frank Capra picture and because of all the changing expectations of sexual roles today, suddenly finds his wife asking him to leave and finding he has to start over in a world where men and women's roles has all gotten different and complicated. So that required a man who could be the man next door, who could be somebody in your town, who could be more of the average American male, and have that kind of simplicity, that simple, decent man. If it was the 40s, uh, I would have cast Jimmy Stewart or Hank Fonda. And Bert, uh, for all of his Playboy cover reputation has a lot of those qualities. And also, he has uh, wonderful comic sense. I think Bert was concerned that I would only think he was Smokey, and which is a, Smokey is just a wonderful cartoon character. And while this is a comedy, he plays uh, you know, a very real man who, uh, in many ways, could be the man next door. And I think he thought I wouldn't see him as that, that I wouldn't believe he could play that kind of reality. But the minute I talked with him and uh, he told me all he related to in the script, uh, I was fine about it. I didn't know how we'd work together. You never know until it happens. But I, from the first day of rehearsal, it was, it was fun. He's bright and uh, he cares and he, no he keeps, he has skill. I mean, I've worked with a lot of film actors. He knows a lot about film acting. Bert has the gift of making hard things look easy, of making things he's worked on very hard look very spontaneous if he hasn't even tried. There are some actors who make easy things look hard, you know, <laughs> and he does, he does the opposite, and I love that kind of acting. And that balance between emotion, the emotion and the, and the vulnerability, he plays a very vulnerable man, between that and the comedy and the lovingness, I call it, it was very important that you really feel he loves that woman at the end of the film. To expose that kind of thing, which men rarely expose in film, wanting a woman in that way, in that romantic a way. Uh, there were all qualities that finally Bert gave himself to and committed himself to. And after that, it was just a question of orchestrating. It's, it's wonderful to work with committed people who really uh, care about uh, the film and, and uh, have that kind of passion. What, what are the kinds of things that might make Bert Reynolds angry or uncomfortable? Uh, I think... Uh, that uh, Bert came from Florida to New York 
into the theater, and I think he was at that time a very young man. And because he was an athlete from Florida, not taken seriously and treated rather patronizingly by people in the theater. Does he still suffer from that? Uh, I think he feels people don't take him seriously uh, to, to an extent. And uh, Bert, uh, Bert has very real vulnerability in the film, and that's because Bert has very real vulnerability as a man. He also has a kind of a wonderful, simple strength in the film, and that's also true of him as a man, very much so. Is he difficult to handle? No, I didn't find him difficult at all. I find he, like all of us, has his good days and his bad days. He has his tired days and his days uh, when, he's, days when he's under pressure. But when he is, he warns you he is totally fair. He, Burt Reynolds is a man that if he feels he's been wrong or done something wrong, he apologizes to you. You don't find many stars doing that. And he does take, he takes what I call a star's responsibility in terms of the other players and making sure that they feel good about themselves, that if he can help them in any way, he will help them. He's generous with other actors and uh, he plays with other actors. If they change their performance, he changes his. It's Dustin Hoffman's like that, Bob Redford, God knows is like that. Uh, Jane Fond is like that. It, it's. Uh, It's an openness to people, and he has that. He gets very proud when other people do good work. You know, I mean, uh, uh, and I think it helped Candy, and it helped Jill too. He's 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 giving a, a director is dependent upon the stars to help each other in a way. Was there great rivalry between Jill and Candace in this film, and on the set? No, I didn't. First of all, they were not in that much of the picture together. They're in very separate parts of the film. Mm -hmm. And of course, then there was one area of the film, and indeed, they do meet. No, I think that they're both women who have an identity to themselves outside of being actresses. Candice is writing a book. She's a very good writer. She's a very good photographer. Jill is a very well-educated woman uh, who has a, a whole interior life outside of acting. So you don't get that kind of what you might have gotten if this had been made on the old MGM lot at the Hey Dave MGM with two big MGM stars under seven-year contract with the studio vying for the studio's attention about who had the bigger part in the film. That's, uh, they don't come from that tradition, you know. Uh, are you, as the producer and director though, Alan, are you constantly looking for little signs of people not getting along and moving in and trying to, you know, be the buffer? Well, you can spend your whole directorial life being a diplomat and waste a lot of creative time. Uh, you do try to avoid misunderstandings and that will interfere with the work because the essence of acting and directing is communication and communi communicating mo emotions to other people. What would you do if you had two stars who absolutely, once they got to working together, just couldn't stand one another and it started showing in, in the scene, in the work? Uh, at that point, one would have to s talk to each of them separately and say, look, for your own survival and the survival of your career, uh, you're going to have to somewhere control that hostility and learn to deal with it because you're going to destroy yourself. Has that ever happened to you as a director producer? Not with a major star to that extent. But with someone, some two people? It can happen up to a point. Which picture? I've, uh, I have a thing about not discussing those things. Anyway. It didn't happen on this one, that I can tell you. And uh, it certainly didn't happen on All the President's Men. Uh, by and large, I have been very fortunate about that. But one is very careful before one casts actors. I mean, you try to make sure that you are going to get along with them. I mean, Britt and I did spend a lot of time together before we decided to do the film together. You know? I mean, I really wanted him to feel he could trust me. I wanted to see if he could work with me and if I could work with him. And better to find that out before you start rehearsing the scene when you, before you start shooting the film, because by that time it's too late. And we went into it with each other, I think, cautiously. And then from the first day we started rehearsing, uh, I knew it would be fine. Uh, anybody who's as passionate about his work as Britt is, is uh, I know I can get along with. Well, Alan, I predict for you that it's going to be the hit of the season. It really is a super movie. Oh, well, I'm delighted Super to entertainment and great performances by everybody. I had a wonderful year just because it's, you know, it's delightful material to work on. Thank you for talking Thank with us here in New much. York. Thank you very Nice to see you again, you. Alan. Thank you. It's very good seeing you again. Stages lower. Stages lower.
But Bert was in competition with some other people, wasn't he? What, what can make Bert Reynolds angry or frustrated or uncomfortable? Was there great rivalry between Jill K. Berg and Candace Bergen in this picture? Who thought of Candace Bergen because she would, just on the surface, seem the most unlikely person to play this role? Okay, now one thing into the camera and then we'll be finished. Okay. okay. Bobby Wygant, Channel 5 Action News in New York.